What's up, guys? Welcome back to today's episode of the Sports Sermon. We are brought to you by Scooch, the most functional phone case on the market. Check out scoochcase.com to get yours today and use the code SPORTS18, sports with a Z, of course, to get a 10% discount on your order. Stay tuned till the end for a special Scooch giveaway as well. But now, today's episode. So we're here today to talk about the Memphis Grizzlies. I am Jason Gandhi. I am joined today with Dan Majors and Dylan Staggy to, like I said, talk about the Memphis Grizzlies. Before we get into the Grizzlies, though, I want to tell you where you can find the show. You can follow it on YouTube, iTunes, and Spotify, all three of those bad boys. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at jgandhi2425. You can follow Dan on Twitter at dmajors44 and Dylan on Twitter at StaggyDylan. But... Let's get into it. The Memphis Grizzlies traded, or sorry, drafted Jaron Jackson Jr. and Javon Carter. What were your thoughts on the picks, and how do they fit into the Grizzlies' long-term plans? I think they're both solid picks, and they should contribute right away. Uh, But for me, this doesn't quite move the needle for the future uh, for the Grizzlies. And I just don't know how much uh, the timeline of everything goes together right now. If they're stuck in mediocrity right now, who does Jaron Jackson Jr. have to play with in the future once uh, Conley and Gasol are gone? And if you do decide to move on from those two, who's taking on either of them with uh, their age, contracts, and now injury history? So I, I think there's a lot of questions for the Grizzlies to uh, be asking. Uh, so I thought Jaron Jackson was one of the safest picks in the draft, and he'll be a solid starter for a long time. If he hits his ceiling, then the Grizzlies could be a piece or two away from competing in like five or so years. So I really like the pick. Yeah, so I also liked it. I thought they nailed this draft. These guys could very easily be the successors to Conley and Gasol. Carter embodies the mo- the motto of grit and grind more than anyone else in this draft class. And as Dan said, Jaron Jackson Jr. is one of the safest picks. I thought they absolutely killed the draft, and it's going to be a big reason why their future is getting brighter and brighter. Let's get into a signing that they made this offseason. Some people scratch their heads. They signed Kyle Anderson to a four-year, $37 million deal. Were you surprised with the offer sheet? Um, I think Kyle Anderson, he's efficient and smart, as most Spurs players were. I think he's limited offensively, though, because he could not shoot a three, but he is still young, and with that contract, he is movable in the future. Overall, I think he's a solid sign for the Grizzlies. For a guy that averaged eight, five, and three, I thought it was way too much for him. Yeah, so I actually, I originally, I thought, ooh, that's a lot of money. I thought the Grizzlies were kind of done giving out a lot of money to average wings at Chandler Parsons. But the more I looked into it, I do like Kyle Anderson. I think it actually isn't too bad of a contract. You look at what other shooting guards are making this year. Iman Shumpert, Danny Green, Norman Powell, Alec Burks, Tony Snell, and Austin Rivers are all making more than him. He is better than all of those guys, and he's only making $9.25 million a year. It really isn't a bad deal based on value around the league. And so I do like the signing for Kyle Anderson. Just when you break it down, it does not feel like all that much. When originally I was with Dan, I was like, ooh, that's a lot of money. But I like Kyle Anderson. I think he could be a good player. And it, he kind of, like, like I said, I think he fits the Grizzlies. That grit and guy mentality. They like guys who are going to go defend the heck out of some players that are smart. And I think him... Jaron Jackson, Javon Carter are all starting to fit that mold. Yeah, I think they're still missing some uh, shooting a little bit off the bench, uh, um, but Kyle Anderson is a guy like that does meet the um, mentality, like you mentioned. Yeah. Um, let's go into my last question that I have for you guys. Basically, they get Mike Conley back with Mark Gasol. Is this a team that could surprise people come April and May? What are your expectations for the Grizzlies? Um, I don't really think that they'll be uh, in playoff contention this year. I think the West is considerably better since the last time that Conley and Gasol uh, made the playoffs, and their team hasn't gotten better around them. Plus, they're both coming off injuries, and they're both over 30 now. See, I, th- I think they definitely could be a playoff team this year. They have the same core in Conley and Gasol from two years ago. Last year, they showed how good Mike Conley really is and how valuable he really is. They dropped 21 more games in their playoff year without him. Uh, now they benefit from Conley being gone. With the addition of Jackson, this could be an upset kind of team And if they get the right seed in the playoffs. I expect playoffs from them. 
after two years ago. Dylan, you have anything? Yeah, I mean, I just think it's a lot different now. I mean, we saw how deep the West was a year ago, and again, both these guys were injured last year, and they uh, continue to get older. I think their team got worse around them. I just think things are a lot different than a couple of years ago. I mean, I feel like the West was just as deep two years ago than it is now, but I don't know. Like, I mean, you saw. I feel like it was mostly just Conley that was gone last year, and they also get Jackson back. Like, Conley was gone. They dropped 21 more games. Conley's back. Yeah, I feel like I, that's pointing up, definitely. I mean, they'll, they'll definitely be better than last year, but I think it's a huge jump for that to the playoffs for me. I mean, there's just a lot of questions that I think still left unanswered. What are the questions you have about this team? I mean, just the future. Like, are you going to continue to build around Mike Conley uh, and Marcus All when they're both over 30, and I don't think they're a playoff team. I mean, maybe they're waiting on this year to answer that question. Can they still make the playoffs with those two? Is it worth it to still build around them? Or do you start building around Jaron Jackson Jr. in the future? I personally don't know why you have to choose between the two. I think the way they're doing it's perfect. I think this is a team that could be fighting for the eight seed. Conley and Gasol are still top guys at their position. And then you add Jaron Jackson. They could very He could very easily be the rookie of the year. My expectations are exactly that. Fight for the 8th seed, and if you miss out, don't be below the 10th seed. I think this team is doing, Dylan, what you kind of have question marks about. I feel like they're doing it in the right way. They're getting, they have, they had the 4th take last year with Jaron Jackson and Javon Carter, getting him in the 33rd pick or whatever it was. Those are two solid young pieces. You've got a guy like Kyle Anderson. That's the future, but you can also stay relevant now and win with Mike Conley and Marcus All. because what better experience than to take Jaron Jackson to the playoffs first year, show him some playoff basketball, and then go get hungry and work harder and then all of that, and you get to add pieces in free agency. And then I think you can start looking towards that younger movement. But right now I think the way they're doing it, I like the move the, the way the Grizzlies are looking in the direction they're heading personally. How many years does Conley have on his contract? I think three. Yeah. But Dylan, were you going to say anything? I'll keep looking while I look. Yeah, I mean, for me, I think this team got worse, got older, um, and the West has gotten better since their – 2015, 16, and 2016, 17 seasons. When even then they were, uh, they won 42 and 43 games and were the seven seed both years. I, I think there's multiple teams that uh, could pass them up even from those years. But like, what's different about two years ago? Like from a team perspective, Conley and Gasol are older. Um, than Conley's this. only 30. Yeah. I That's mean, and coming off an injury. Yeah. I mean, things are different for me. I mean, people have come off of injuries before and been just fine, so I don't know why you wouldn't expect the playoffs, I guess. So, Gasol's 33. That one, I think, yeah, you can say maybe he declines a little, but I think Mike Conley will be... So I think it's just easy to overlook Mike Conley because he's been hurt and like he doesn't do anything flashy. He's a very underrated player. Yeah. And he was very underrated until he got that contract, and then, like, the eyes, then he was too overrated. Was then it was... Overrated. Yeah. So... Yeah, he's a very underrated player. I like him a lot. Dylan, is there any way they can make the playoffs this year? Or even touch the playoffs? Like, sniff them? I would not say it's very likely at all. Really? Yeah, I mean, I guess we're just kind of have to leave it there. I don't know. I mean, there's not much else to say besides just, like, wait and see. Because it seems like, I, I mean, personally, I, I give the credit to Jaron Jack. I think he could win Rookie of the Year, and I would not be surprised for one second. I mean, he can shoot the three. He's going to lock down people defensively. Him and Mike Conley, and then Mark, whatever Marcus Saul. I feel like, I, feel, I guess for me, Jaron Jackson replaces what Marcus Saul could do. And anything you get from Marcus Saul, Marcus Saul is gravy. Like I feel like you get Mike Conley, Dylan Brooks. They traded Ben McLemore and got Garrett Temple, who's a heck of a shooter. So now they go Mike Conley, Garrett Temple, Dylan Brooks, um, Jaron Jackson, and Marcus Saul. Now you've got two top of their positions. Marcus Saul, who I think will still be fine, and then a great shooter in Garrett Temple and a good 3 and D guy in Dylan Brooks. I don't know. I think that's enough to compete for the eight. Like I would take that equal with like the Spurs of some sort. I think they can compete with the Spurs I mean, in their own division and stuff like that. Yeah. All right. All right. Yep. That's going to wrap this one up. So I mentioned Scooch in the opener. 
I said 10%. I'm going to change that to 15%. If you use the code SPORTS18, sports with a Z, you can get 15% off all Scooch Case products. Also, if you comment below, you'll be entered to win a free Scooch Case. Make sure you comment and subscribe, and you will have a chance to win that. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you guys later.